In a microservices architecture, exposing your services through external APIs is essential for enabling communication between clients and your backend. However, designing these APIs come with its own set of challenges. The API gateway pattern is like the front door to your microservices architecture. It acts as a single entry point for all client requests, routing them to the appropriate services, and often handling tasks such as authentication, rate limiting, and caching. In microservices architecture, one might consider allowing clients to directly invoke the services they need. The seems simple at a first glance. However, this approach comes with significant challenges. Imagine you are building an e-commerce application using microservices architecture. Your application might have several services, such as a product service that manages product details like descriptions, prices, and availability. An order service that handles order processing, including your order creation, payment, and shipping and maybe a customer service that manages customer information, including profiles, addresses, and payment methods. Now, let's say a client like your mobile app or web frontend needs to display a product page that includes product details, customer reviews, and related products. If the client directly interacts with the services, it would need to call the product service to fetch the product details, then call the customer service to retrieve customer-specific information, such as purchase history or personalized recommendation. And finally, call the review service to gather product reviews. This approach introduces a few key challenges. The client has to make several requests to different services to gather all the necessary data. For example, if the product page needs information from the product review and customer services, the client must make three separate API calls. Each of these calls add latency, making the user wait longer for the page to load. Furthermore, the client becomes tightly coupled to the internal microservices architecture. It needs to know exactly which service to call and what each services APIs look like. If you need to change the internal architecture, say by splitting the service into smaller ones or merging services, the client code must also be updated to reflect these changes. And this lack of encapsulation makes the system brittle and harder to maintain. Finally, microservices might also use various inter-process communication or IPC mechanisms that aren't well suitable for external clients. For example, your services might use REST, gRPC, or message queues like Kafka for internal communication. Exposing these internal communication protocols directly to clients can introduce security risks and increase complexity because external clients typically expect standards like HTTP or HTTPS APIs. Imagine that you decide to change the underlying architecture by merging the review service with the product service, basically to reduce the number of service calls and improve performance. With direct client service interaction, you would now have to update every client application to reflect this change, updating URLs, request formats, and handling the new combined service. Or consider that your services use a binary protocol like gRPC for performance reasons, but your clients only understand RESTful HTTP APIs. Direct interaction would force you to either change the protocol, which might not be feasible, or create additional translation layers, which adds unnecessary complexity. And to address these challenges, there are several API design patterns you can consider. BFF or Backend for Frontend pattern creates a dedicated API for each client type, like mobile, web, or desktop. It ensures that each client gets exactly what it needs. But again, managing multiple BFFs can itself become more complex. Proxy pattern acts as a simple pass-through for requests between the client and the backend services. While it's easy to implement, it doesn't really offer much in terms of optimization or customization. In Composite pattern, the API combines responses from multiple services into a single response, and this can reduce the number of client requests but may also introduce coupling between services. Aggregator patterns share similarities with composite pattern, particularly in their role of reducing client requests by aggregating data from multiple services. But while the composite pattern is more focused on API design, the aggregator pattern is broader and used specifically within the microservices architecture. But there is one pattern that stands out for handling the complexity of all external APIs in microservices the API gateway pattern. The API gateway consolidates the responsibilities of the other patterns and more. It can transform data formats, aggregate responses from multiple services. It can even enforce security policies handling tasks like authentication and routing. By centralizing these tasks, the API Gateway simplifies your microservices architecture, making it more scalable and easier to manage. Now that we understand the value of API Gateway, let's talk about how to design and implement one. When designing an API Gateway, the first step is to define the responsibilities of the Gateway. You need to decide what tasks the Gateway will handle, such as request routing, response aggregation, protocol translation, and security enforcement. And next, consider the deployment strategy. Will your gateway be deployed centrally, or will you have multiple instances, perhaps one per region for all client type? 
and this decision will impact the gateway's performance and scalability. So when it comes to implementation, you have several options. Products like Amazon API Gateway and Apigee provide robust enterprise gate solutions that comes with built-in features like rate limiting, logging, and security. They are easy to set up and integrate with existing microservices, but at the same time can be costly and may lock you into specific ecosystem. I made a detailed video on API gateways previously discussing some of their most popular features and have compared some of the popular products which will give you a better understanding. If you need more control, frameworks like Spring Cloud Gateway and Express Gateway allow you to build a gateway tailored to your specific needs. These frameworks offer flexibility but require more development effort and maintenance. Finally, one modern approach to building an API gateway is using GraphQL. GraphQL allows clients to query your API in a flexible way, asking for exactly the data they need and nothing more. This reduces overfetching and underfetching issues common with REST APIs. You can check out my video on GraphQL here where I explain it from scratch with practical examples and use cases. In a microservices architecture, you can implement GraphQL API that communicates with multiple backend services. The gateway translates GraphQL queries into requests to the appropriate services and then aggregates the results and sends them back to the client. This approach is particularly powerful when dealing with complex data models and client-specific needs. GraphQL's strong type system also helps catch errors early in the development process, improving the reliability of your API. API Gateway Pattern facilitates faster processing, decreases load time, and optimizes resource utilization. In addition, the API Gateway ensures that the client only accesses one service instead of multiple microservices, reducing the risk of DDoS attacks.